Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. This time, um, I recently did a, a IPS LCD install for the Game Boy Pocket and the video did pretty well. And actually my buddy uh, asked me to do some uh, mod work for him. And in exchange, um, he actually sent me this uh, Game Boy Advance SP IPS LCD. And you can see retails for 63 bucks. And so this is uh, once again from uh, Handheld Legend, and so they've been they've been pretty much on a uh, on a roll with all these IPS kits. So I always wanted to try um, installation for the SP. So let's just see what's included in the kit first off. So we have the ribbon itself, and there is one extra wire and. I'm gonna say that's probably for maybe the switch. I'm not sure how it handles um, brightness because there is no touch sensor on this model. So I'm guessing it uses the original switch. And for this model in particular, um, the LCD is actually fused uh, to the glass screen protector, um, which is actually pretty convenient because you don't get you know dust or anything in between. And there's actually this really nice overlay. You can see there's a picture of a Game Boy Advance SP on there. One thing that does lack notably is if I peel this off. Actually, wait. <laughs> I've seen a couple without the Game Boy Advance logo. So it's interesting that this one has it. Uh, but it's not exactly one to one. If I were to grab. Okay, this is my first Game Boy Advance SP. And here you can see the emblem is not glossy and it sort of has a gray color to the lens itself. And this is a 001, just in case you're interested. But I actually did upgrade the screen on this to a 101. But that was my very first SP that I saved up pocket money in order to buy back in the day when I was actually a teenager. But you can see this one is actually actually kind of nicer. I like the, um, the very shiny SP logo there. So I'm pleasantly surprised. I was maybe on the fence... Um, I didn't know copyright wise if they're allowed to have the original logo or whatever, but apparently they have them. So nice. I like that. Anyway, the screen is quite a bit thinner than the original and we will have to actually cut out some of the case and maybe uh, use some foam in order to get it to, to stick right in the upper shell. But I have this, um, this SP, I, I don't know. I want to say this is a 101. The shell is a 101. But I just grabbed this from my parts drawer, so I'm not sure off the top of my head. But anyway, it shouldn't matter. Uh, I just want to run a very quick test to make sure that this turns on at all. Oh. Yeah, screen works. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so here we are. I ordered off eBay one of these uh, fancy clear cases. Uh, because I actually pulled this, oh, well, everything's sticking together now. I actually pulled this from a really battered unit and it had like one of those really cheap aftermarket shells. And these clear shells actually, from what I found, all the ones I've ordered have been actually significantly higher quality. So I've done this video quite a while ago where I did a clear, um, this is a 101 screen, obviously, but I did a clear install. And that still works perfectly. And so we're going to do uh, the installation on this case here. And so we'll just start unpacking this. Now, there will be a couple steps that we'll need to take in addition to just kind of a regular install. And one of them is we need to uh, solder a single wire for brightness control. And we'll need to make a cut onto the top shell. Um, I believe it's this side here, uh, which needs to be removed so the the um, glass doesn't get cracked when you go to screw it together. I'm just going to get this out of the way, install the hinge. Now, it's easy to demonstrate on this clear one. There's um, two colored hinges. One's black and one is white. You can clearly see the color there. Not all hinges, uh, re revisions of the SP have color coded. Some of them are both white, which is kind of a pain. So you have to remember and maybe mark it with a Sharpie which one's left and which one's right when you take it out of the old shell. None of these cases actually come with the hinges, so you need to remove them from the old shell or buy replacements. So left is black and right is 
white. So I'm going to take these hinges and actually before we do that, we have to uh, insert the end caps. So to do that, it just kind of slides on. Now the fit and finish of these caps are not perfect. And you'll see there's a like a little divot in the plastic that juts out on the one side that has to go on the bottom, obviously. And you just want to kind of slot it in and it should kind of click in. And the same thing, find the divot, point it towards you, and then the hole for the hinge just kind of clicks in like that. So both of these are in now. I'm going to insert the white one. Now, I believe you have to have it open partially. There are little slots in the sides, and they actually have to be aligned. And it should just sort of start going in by itself. And you do have to align it correctly, otherwise it won't go in very easily. And then you just kind of push them in and they'll click in. And you'll know it works when it uh, cleanly snaps like that. And it snaps open in kind of this 45 degree angle um, position. So now I know these hinges are in correctly. And they're in there and the caps are flush. Okay, so that is that. Now, before we get too far, I suppose it's best to, to make the cut that we need. Now, went on the uh, Handheld Legend website for the installation instructions. And they actually link um, a page with full installation instructions from the very beginning of disassembling and everything. Actually, really in depth. I like how they did this. Okay, yeah, there's... Um, two pictures. I, I found this on a, a Google search. Uh, it shows that we have to cut out, uh, if we're looking at it like this, we have to cut out all along the top here. Yeah, and it shows the same picture on a different colored case, um, which is actually very similar to mine, maybe a little bit darker purple. But yeah, we're going to have to cut out this kind of internal ribbing uh, in order for the glass to fit without cracking. You can either score it with an X-Acto knife if you want a cleaner cut. Um, and you have to also kind of cut through those uh, vertical ribbing on there as well. Or if you don't care as much and it's not a clear shell, you could just use some side cutters to, to kind of cut that out in sections. But that will leave uh, scarring. Uh, so I'm going to try to avoid that because this is a clear shell. So you will easily see if there's any... Um, if you slip or anything, or if you dug, dig out some extra plastic uh, and it cracks or something, it will be highly visible. So I'm going to take this nice and slow. I'm going to do this off camera and remove this side piece right here. Okay, so I cut this down. I didn't do that great of a job. I've heard, I haven't tried it out myself, but I've heard that if you use um, acetone, you can kind of get the plastic to melt a little bit and it'll turn less white. It'll be more translucent, but it is clearly visible, but that is what it is. Now, there's a protective film on it. And then it just sort of sits in place right in here. And the ribbon, likewise. I will need to sit about here actually going to let's see double-sided tape just a little sliver to actually tape the ribbon down and we are going to snap the connector on before we actually tape it down let's see get this aligned And just sort of try to get it as straight as you can, just so that's kind of aesthetically pleasing. And the reason why we cut down this area was so it doesn't actually press. Now this LCD ribbon actually has to kind of twist around like this. And then be inserted kind of at an angle within this cavity right here. A little finicky just be careful you don't uh, tug it too hard or anything like that so that you don't damage it and just to hold that in place there's this little guy here 
So these, all these plastic parts are untapped. They're just straight from the mold. So I'm actually going to carefully thread the piece in and create the taps just so I don't risk stripping the screw. Again, I'm just gonna screw this in here from the bottom to keep that ribbon in place. And there we go. So that top latch piece is in place now. Now, one thing I'm noticing is uh, this back part won't sit flush uh, because this connector is there and I don't want to move it over too much uh, more that could actually damage. So I'm actually going to remove uh, just around that area uh, the plastic. There's like a little lip on here. I'm going to actually remove that just to be safe. Okay, so as you can see now, I cut out a little lip so that it doesn't actually press down on that and now it fits perfectly the the entire seam so there's five screws that have to go in the top shell lid so i'm going to do that real quick okay so we're all screwed in and like i said i actually went through and i pre-tapped them before even screwing them in pre-tapped them very carefully with the uh, screwdriver just on the the back shell where the screws go into so that they went in uh, straight and they didn't strip these are really soft screws even just screwing them in regularly once some of the screw heads are kind of a little messed up if you have the original screws which i might probably at the bottom here i might go through later and replace them with the original ones because they're much higher quality anyway uh, you can see it's in there there's no gap in the front so we are good to go so i'm going to try it out try to use the uh, original membranes and see how that works now if you do, if you don't care about the brightness control, you don't need to do anything. Uh, however, if you do want to have the button uh, cycle through the brightnesses, does the kit does come with a little length of wire. So what you need to do is, um, let's see, something I can point with. Uh, on your board, now I don't know what revision this is, and the boards do look slightly different between 101 and 001, and maybe even within each uh, type there might be different revisions, but you're looking for a point that's labeled U one one two B, and you can see right here it's above LED C, which there's a solder point right here, and the point right above there it's near the the D pad usually. Uh, that's the point that you want to solder, and I believe that actually connects to this switch here, and so I'm going to solder the wire to that, and then that needs to go to. Uh, there's a solder point right in the corner there on the ribbon, and that needs to connect to that. Now, the ribbons I always found are a pain to get in, so if you open up the screen slightly, it relieves the pressure on the ribbon and allows you to, to get a little extra length in there to grab it. Don't pull too hard, though, clearly. Okay, as you can see, I had the ribbon inserted. I locked down the... Uh, the oh, there you go. Now you can see. I locked down the uh, the tilting ZIF bar, and I routed the ribbon kind of to this side over here, as you can see. And we are going to insert the, the buttons. Okay, and then we have the speaker. Now, aesthetically, it looks better. I think just the bare speaker without the felt pad, but dust can get in there, so I'm going to just put the felt pad in there. Speaker just sort of plops down in there, and everything kind of sits. Okay, yeah, so there are three uh, Phillips screws, and those hold the shell in, and basically one in the center, and then one on each side here. And just be careful, don't screw them down all the way, because on some of the fits on some of these uh, aftermarket cases, um, the buttons might not press properly, so we're just going to have to just get this in loosely and then we'll test the fit and make sure all the buttons are all clicky. Okay, now would be actually a great time to test this out. Okay, speaker nice and loud. And you can see as I press the backlight button, turn that down. 
it is adjusting the brightness. So the extra wire we soldered is working. All the buttons feel all right. Make sure shoulder buttons are working. Okay, yeah, everything feels good. Getting towards the end here, there's a few things left to do. So we have to insert this nut into the battery bay, and that's what holds the, the battery door in. And this is usually kind of a tight fit. Okay, all screws in, just get them snug. Don't, don't over tighten them. This is an old trick. You can take an original DS battery and cut off those little plastic stubs and it'll fit in and give you longer battery life than the, um, the stock Game Boy bat or SP battery. And it just fits in like that. Make sure everything kind of slides smoothly. Uh, before you screw it together, actually, common sticking points, this volume slider sometimes is tight. Um, so you might have to kind of readjust and uh, this screw here, if you tighten too much, that could pinch it as well. You might have to back that off and loosen it slightly. Just double check and feel all the buttons once again. And one last thing is this guy comes with a tiny little sticker uh, that says Nintendo, clearly. So we are going to stick that on like so. And there we go. We are done. And yeah, it works. Brightness appears that there's what one, two, three, four, five, six, six levels of brightness. And this is at full blast right now. Now the aspect ratio is slightly different than the original screen, which you can kind of see um, it's a bit taller. Just set them on the white screen and both of them at full brightness. So now they're both at full brightness. This screen is definitely quite a bit brighter. You can see it's just ever so slightly taller uh, compared to the original. This is an AGS 101 LCD and um, it's, it's also a bit wider as well. So overall you're getting more real estate kind of and you can tell very easily uh, the white balance on this display, this looks, you know, perfect white. This looks kind of purpley, kind of pinkish purple white, uh, which is kind of a byproduct, I guess, of the LCD itself, the quality of the screen. Um, I believe this is a TFT display, and this guy is obviously an IPS, so viewing angles are going to be much better. You can see... This looks just as clear at this angle as head on and this screen starts color shifting once you get off angle and likewise and the top and the bottom there as well. Uh, one thing is what that you lose is this uses I believe integer scaling on the LCD uh, for the pixels um, because the, dis the display that they use for this came from I believe like a Blackberry or something and it's much higher resolution. Uh, but you lose, there's sort of a screen door effect where you can see kind of some of the space in between all the pixels. Here, it's just like kind of a solid image. You don't you don't get that at all. So yeah, image quality is really crisp on this though. It looks exactly as if you're emulating this on like a, a smartphone. Just like super crisp. Uh, colors are really saturated. Kind of hard to do it justice um, viewing it through my camera, but it looks really nice. And the blacks are, you can kind of see the bezel itself. If you view on an angle, you can see the bezel is black and the, the screen itself is black as well. It's really... It, you know, the blacks are very black. Um, you you kind of can't tell the difference between the glass bezel and the screen displaying black as well. Um, it's easier if you tilt at an angle, you can see it. But yeah, that's actually really good. Yeah. 
The colors are very nice. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> I could zoom around all day in this game. So see how fast I'm zooming and I'm not seeing any like usually you can see if there's any uh, like sync issues with the display. Um, if there's like a highly contrasted vertical line, when you scroll, you might sometimes see on uh, other displays that it'll not be a straight line anymore. It kind of cuts up or um, distorts. But here you can see the image. Now it's perfectly buttery smooth. <laughs> Absolutely no issues there. There's no um, kind of distortion on the background. There's no like motion blur like... Um, Older displays tend to have. Yeah, this is great. Display looks fantastic. Nice and crisp. Forgot to put in these little rubber bungs. These just kind of sit in. Kind of just use your fingernail to press them in. And these are just to prevent the buttons from possibly scratching the screen to keep it separated just slightly. Okay. Okay, so here we are. I'm actually filming <laughs> my microscope display, and it's open under it. Interesting thing, you can see it looks like uh, the lettering for the Game Boy Advance logo is laser etched. Uh, you can kind of see some kind of vertical striations on there. That's rather interesting. Anyway, uh, the screen itself, if we turn it on there, you can see the pattern. I have to kind of get it on a static screen. Okay, there we go. So yeah, you can see it's a four or two by two uh, pixel arrangement. So for instance, uh, let's see, you can see that single pixel is actually four pixels. Uh, and everything is it's it's an integer scaling, so that's definitely good. So you're not going to get weird shimmery effects or some kind of weird interlacing. But yeah, you can see everything is kind of a four by four pattern. But uh, let's try and zoom in a bit on that. There you go. So now here, once we're zoomed in really far, you can actually start to see the individual red, green, and blue, and they're stacked. There, it's a um, like a horizontal stripe, and they're they're stacked. So this is supposed to be like a whitish pixel, actually. These are supposed to be white. And you can see they're all at full brightness. And so each subpixel, three of them stacked, create like a perfect square. So that's actually really nice because um, you're not going to get any kind of vertical stretching that way. It's, it's uh, you know, three rectangular subpixels create a square a singular pixel there. But yeah, that looks fantastic. It's actually really cool. You can see um, some of the flickering in the background, how it's modulating the um, red and green there to create kind of an orange color. It's actually really cool. So yeah, we can see as I modulate the brightness. Pixels get obviously brighter or dimmer a uh, huge thanks for my buddy uh dustin for sending this in for me for install the lcd kit if you're interested in doing this type of mod i if you have a like a rare shell i actually would not suggest uh cutting into it or anything i would get like an aftermarket shell if you don't care and it's an opaque shell then yeah you can cut into it whatever you want uh, but just note that shut this off uh, it does leave kind of a visible seam, and that's rather unfortunate uh, on clear shells. And like I said, I heard you could use um, like acetone or something to to lessen that effect, but I think it's pretty much always going to be visible, unfortunately. But that's just something you have to live with, uh, that you do have to cut that out, otherwise it will put pressure on both the ribbon and the display and um, possibly crack the display. And like I said, uh, I needed to cut actually an additional area right here that wasn't noted in the, um, the instructions. So I don't know, maybe I placed my ribbon a little 
too far over and that's why it didn't clear but that might be something you have to look out for and do yourself and i did not place any foam uh, to press the lcd forward uh, but in my case it somehow works out it, it's not floating it's not moving or anything so yeah anyway this looks absolutely fantastic the only thing missing is uh of course you could put the uh rear sticker you can buy them uh, I actually, on clear shells, like not having that sticker because you could see the full label with the game inserted. So I'm just going to leave it like that. But anyway, yeah, I've rambled on for pretty long, so hopefully this video isn't too long once I edit it down. And if you guys are interested in uh, mods like this, just let me know, and um, I might be able to do a, a couple more. I have a couple more systems I haven't IPS'd yet. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.